Hello, and welcome to this Quick Plays video on bankroll management. Bankroll management, also referred to as BRM, is a core principle that all successful poker players must understand and abide by. Knowing how to manage and allocate our bankroll keeps us in the game and away from being broke. So let's explore this powerful concept. You may have heard the popular poker adage, playing within your bankroll. This phrase can mean two things, having a big enough bankroll to withstand common variance, and playing a level that your bankroll and skill level support. As we all know, there's a lot of variance in poker. Sometimes everything goes right and we feel like geniuses, and other times everything goes wrong and our opponents hit every flush draw against us. So it's important that our bankroll can handle these common fluctuations, also known as variance. The common bankroll management rule for no limit cash game players is 20 buy-ins. So if you play 1-2 live cash games and buy in for 100 big blinds, or $200, then you should have a bankroll of at least 4,000. If you play 25 no limit online and buy in for 100 big blinds, then you should have a bankroll of at least 500. This rule ensures that you never buy in at a table for more than 5% of your bankroll. The idea is to have a big enough bankroll to withstand typical pucker variants and lower your risk of ruin or risk of going broke. Now for a recreational player, this isn't as big of a deal. If you play poker as a hobby, you can always add to your bankroll later with paychecks and savings. And if you play as a hobby, you don't fully depend on poker winnings to support you. Professional players, on the other hand, ones who make most or all of their income from playing, will want much larger bankrolls. This is because they will take from their bankroll to pay their bills, they're going to want an emergency fund in case things go wrong, and it's really hard to play poker if you don't have any money. And even more so for professional online players who are playing lots of tables and can easily have 20 or more buy-ins spread across all of their games. For professional players, I usually suggest closer to 50 buy-ins for live play or closer to 100 buy-ins for multi-tabling online. It's conservative, but better safe than sorry when your monetary livelihood depends on it. The other aspect of playing within your bankroll is playing a level that your bankroll and skills support. Just because you are a recreational player with 10k in the bank doesn't necessarily mean you should be playing 400 no limit online. Sure, you have 25 buy-ins for it, more than the 20 buy-in minimum, but if you can't beat 400 no limit, what's the point? You'd be better off playing a smaller game that you have a positive expected value in than playing in a higher game that you'd lose in, even if your bankroll would allow you to play it. All of this talk about bankroll management assumes that you are a winning player. If someone is a losing player, then BRM would only prolong the time until they are broke. But enough theory, let me show you why BRM is vital. Let's say you only have $100 to your name, and you sit in this 100 no limit game. As we know, one buy-in is nowhere close to good bankroll management, and here's why. Say early position open shoves for $100 and it folds to you in the big blind with aces. This is a great situation and the easiest call in the world, and for whatever reason, villain shows us he has kings, which we obviously crush. However, like most poker situations, even though we are crushing our opponent, he still has some equity and will win this hand a portion of the time. In fact, his kings have 18% equity against us, which means not only will we lose 18% of the time, but we'll actually be dead broke 18% of the time. And while this is an extreme example, just losing your poker bankroll 18% of the time would be awful. Again, it's tough to play poker if you don't have any poker money to play with. And just to show you something, here is a poker variance calculator from PokerDope.com. If we plug in some simple numbers, we can visualize possible downswings and variance within a sample. Let's plug in a win rate of 3 BB per 100. Let's plug in a standard deviation of 75. And let's plug in a sample size of 100,000 hands. You can get all of these numbers from your poker database, including standard deviation, which essentially looks at how wide your swings are likely to be. And I usually just do this analysis with a 100k sample size, which is about a year of full-time live play or a couple months of mass tabling online. If you have data, you can change all of these numbers to match your own, using things like your database or just use simple estimations. But with these numbers, we see two big things. So if we click calculate and then scroll down, we see this graph that represents 20 samples or 20 represented players over this sample size with this win rate and standard deviation. 
we notice that the worst performing player is actually down 46 buy-ins, and the best performing player is up something like 104 buy-ins. It'd be nice to be this guy, but let's be honest, we can't all be huge luck boxes. So while 100,000 hands may seem like a lot, and even with a positive win rate, it's possible to lose a lot of buy-ins due to significant run bad that none of us are exempt from. And the second thing we can see if we scroll down just a little bit are possible downswings. So let's actually stretch this to a million hand sample size and look at the kind of downswings that could happen. Notice that over the sample size of a million hands, the person can hit a peak downswing of 37 buy-ins, another 37 buy-in downswing, and this one for almost 35. If a professional player only used a 20 buy-in bankroll, he could have easily been wiped out by standard variance. A recreational poker player doesn't fully rely on poker income and can always supplement their bankroll. A professional player doesn't have that luxury if poker is their main income. I also want to mention moving up and down real quick, since this is directly related to BRM. First is that if you use BRM, the chances of you going broke are very small. If you start playing a 100 no limit with a 2k bankroll and over time your bankroll drops to 1k, you should move down since you have a proper bankroll for 50 no limit. Assuming you keep moving down when your bankroll forces you to, you would have to lose more than 50 buy-ins before you hit 2 no limit, which isn't very likely for a winning player. If you aren't sure if you are a winning player, you should start at the smallest limits and go from there. Still adhere to the 20 buy-in rule and start to see how you perform and then make adjustments as you go. As your bankroll grows higher and higher, you may decide to move up to the next level. But don't feel like you need to move up the second you have 20 buy-ins for the next level. You should consider moving up once your bankroll and skill level are high enough. If you don't feel like you could beat the next highest level comfortably, keep grinding at the level you're playing until you and your bankroll are ready. You could also consider taking shots along the way in an effort to move up even faster. Say you're playing 50 no limit and you get your bankroll up to 1.5k or 30 buy-ins. This is a good bankroll for 50 no limit, but not enough to make 100 no limit your full-time home. But you could consider taking a 1 to 2 buy-in shot at 100 no limit in an effort to move up even quicker, get experience at the next highest level, and to ensure you don't put your entire bankroll at risk. I like shot taking with 15 plus buy-ins for the next level, but it's almost always a 1 to 2 buy-in shot, and if I lose it, then I just rebuild it at my current level. Just don't get too aggressive with shot taking and risk putting your main level's bankroll in jeopardy. BRM is a key principle for all winning poker players. Having enough money to keep you in the game and diminish your risk of ruin is huge. Don't be an ego player. Play games you know you can win when you have the money to play them. If you don't have the money or skill now, keep working to both grow your bankroll and ability. And one last note is that you don't have to bring your whole bankroll with you at all times. Just because you have $4,000 to play 1-2 live doesn't mean you need to bring 4k cash when you go to the casino. Just make sure you have the 4k set aside in your poker bankroll so you can weather the variance. Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.